Shalom, family. Hey, so, um, praise y'all. Still in the book of Judges, right? Yesterday, um, did a video a little bit on the intro, but, um, today, the Most High gave me a little bit of insight in chapter three, right? And chapter three literally starts off by the Most High talking about the nations he chose not to remove from, you know, the midst of Israel, right? Nations that, again, according to the prophecy that we talked about yesterday from Yahushua, nations that would for sure be a snare to Israel. But it literally says in Judges chapter 3, in the beginning, first couple of verses, it literally says that the Most High did not remove these nations. Why? So that he could prove Israel. So understand this. A lot of times what we go through, right, in our walk in truth, we look at certain things as stumbling blocks or even just snares. For example, people, you know, bosses. And I'm talking about mainly people who are, are in our lives that for whatever reason, the Most High has not removed them, right? And not maybe not even just people, circumstances, right? Um, there are certain things that you may see as dysfunctional, right? But the Most High is allowing those things to stay there to prove you, right? literally to prove you, to test you, to see if you are going to continue to follow Torah with this thing, right? This, this, this snare, right? That is really an outlet for you to serve other Elohims. Because again, if you look at that text, I think it's verse three, it literally says that, or verse four, it literally says that these nations, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Perizzites, um, uh, and like two other nations, um, and again, I, I don't know the exact ones, I, I could go to it to refer, but definitely the Canaanites and the Jebusites were two of the main nations. And again, they served other Elohims. We know they worship Baal, right? We know they worship Ashtaroth. And the Bible literally says that, you know, after the Most High chose not to remove those nations to prove them and to test them, the Bible literally says that they ended up doing evil in the sight of Yahuwah. And doing what? Making covenants with them. Giving their sons and their daughters to go into marriage covenants with these other nations. And it led them to do what? Serve their other Elohims. Right? So what, what ended up happening? They ended up going into bondage. And the Most High had to raise up a judge <laughs> to deliver them out of bondage. The Bible literally says that, that they, they cried to Elohim. And Elohim raised up Caleb's um, pretty much his nephew. I think his name is Kinez, um, Quinez, right? But literally, he he raised up um, uh, Caleb, who, you know, Joshua and Caleb, they were the, the two of the main spies that had a good report, right, that Moshe sent out in the book of Numbers to spy out the land, right? So his nephew, the Most High, ended up raising him as a judge. Now, let's look at the word judge again, because I know I talked about it briefly in the video yesterday, but it's key to understand that a judge goes back to the Hebrew word shofat, right? Shin, he, tet, right? Shofat. And it literally is one who reviews a case and rules over a case. And, you know, uh, uh, a case that involves two different parties. So understand this. Um, the Bible talks about how Kinez and, and even the, the, the other judges that are raised up, because there's more than one judges that he raised up in chapter three. But this is the point, and I want y'all to see this prophetically. The judges that he raised up, the Bible says all of them had the Ruach, right? So in, in nowadays, the judges that we, that Most High is, is raising up are one, people who have the Ruach, right? Meaning that they have the ability to hear and to decide over a case or to decide over a matter based off of what the Ruach leads them and shows them about people that come to them for advice and come to them for counsel, right? Now understand this, the judge has the ability to execute judgment, right? Not only does he um, bring forth the judgment on behalf of the people but again the judge also rebukes those within israel that are not willing to hearken to what the most high has led them to to rule over in the case right the the decision of the case so what what does that mean ultimately 
and my wife and I have experienced this where we'll be around certain individuals, certain people, and the most high will lead them to ask us, hey, what do you think about this situation? And off rip, we don't just tell them what we think. We'll pray and we'll seek Yahuwah. We'll, we'll seek the Ruach. We'll inquire the Ruach on, on what what he wants us to say about this specific situation. And the judgment piece comes in because the Ruach will tell us to tell them what to do, right? And for the most, I mean, understand this. The Torah is always the guide. We're not going, we're not going to tell you to do nothing outside of the Torah unless it's something, and I'll give you an example, unless it's something that is specific pertaining to you. And again, it's not going to lead you to transgress Torah, never that. But it might be a different instruction that might not necessarily be listed in the Torah. And I'm going to give you an example of this, right? And I know you're like, something not listed in the Torah. Just hold on. So look, the young rich ruler, right? That came to Hamashiach, right? And wanted to follow him, right? And you can read about this in pretty much all the gospels, specifically um, Matthew and Mark and in Luke, I believe. Um, he came to Hamashiach and asked, you know, what could he do to follow him? And Hamashiach like, okay, you obeying the commandments? And, you know, he rattled off some of the commandments and he's like, yeah, what else do I need to do? And, um, you know, obey your mother, your father. Yep, I do it. Um, do I give to the poor? I do it. This and that. Um, He's like, okay. Um, Hamashiach is like, okay, you're young, you're rich. Hamashiach literally being led of the Ruach says this, something that's not in Torah. He tells him, look, sell all of your things and give those things to the poor, then follow me. Is that in the Torah? No, that's not necessarily listed. In, I mean, yeah, overall to give to the, the poor, that's listed in Torah. But again, the requirement to follow Hamashiach, you selling all of your things, that's not a specific um, instruction. That's not a specific law in Torah, right? But what? What was it? It was literally the Ruach giving him a specific scenario based off of his situation. Yah knew he was rich. So Yah was like, okay, through the Ruach, told Yahushua to tell him, listen, man, sell all of your things. That was a stronghold. That was a specific thing that he needed to do based off of his circumstance and his situation. Right. So that's what I mean by the judge. He looks over a case being led of the Ruach and he gives insight based off of what the set apart Ruach is leading him to say at that moment, point in time. I'm going to give you another example. Give you another example of this. Another example of this would be look at the book of Revelation. Right. Hamashiach in the first two chapters is literally addressing all the assemblies in Asia Minor. It's like seven different assemblies, right? One of them is Laodicea. One of them is Philadelphia. Um, one of them is Sardis and several other assemblies. But notice how each assembly he had a different issue with and he gave them each specific instru instructions. One of them, he said, listen, man, you know, I would rather you be hot or cold or either I will spew you out of my mouth, you know, um, make a decision. Either be, be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm, right? Another assembly, he told him, listen, man, you know, you left your first love. Go back to the first works, right? Go back to repentance, right? So, again, what I'm saying is that all of them had different... If, if you go and you read the, the first, you know, I'm sorry, the second and third chapters in the book of Revelations, you'll literally see Hamashiach giving specific instructions to each assembly that was different. So that's how you know... A judge being led of the Ruach is one that looks over a scenario and a situation being led of the Ruach and gives insight based off of the Ruach, right? And I need y'all to see that, man. And and ultimately what it is, is the Most High, he's raising up judges in Israel right now. And a lot of people are separating themselves from those judges. Why? Because they're not willing to obey the word that the Ruach is speaking through those judges, right? I've had several people... You know, the Most High gave me words to give them. And, you know, I seen the separation because ultimately they didn't want to receive the word of the prophet. They didn't want to receive the word of the judge, the, shof the shofat, which is very similar to the shofar, which is a warning. Right. They give warning to the people. Listen, you do this, then Yah will spare you and do this. If you don't do this, judgment comes. 
And if you look at any prophet in the Bible, and so last thing I'm going to say for, you know, shut the video down. But if you look at any prophet in the Bible, the word came with the word came with consequences if you didn't do it and blessings if you did do it. So it's very similar to going back to Moshe. You know, I said before you today, life and blessings. I'm sorry, life and death, blessings and curses. Choose this day life so that you and your seed may live. So understand this, if you reject the word that the Most High sends to you through a prophet, even though it might not necessarily be written down in Torah, but overall, it's in line with what the Most High has laid out according to Torah. Understand this, you reject that word or that prophet, that's you rejecting the Ruach. You're still in disobedience. Think about King Saul, right? When Samuel or the, the prophet Samuel told him hey listen man you got to go and you got to uh destroy the amalekites man you got to kill king agag of the amalekites don't take none of the, the spoils don't do none of that like that's that was the instruction what did he do something completely different <laughs> and it cost him being king of israel because he disobeyed what yah told him to do and again that wasn't listed in torah that that wasn't necessarily a commandment listed in torah for him to specifically kill one of the kings of the now again overall in torah you do see where moshe says several times you know utterly destroy you know um the those who are inhabiting the land you know burn down their altars and do this and do that but shaul had a specific instruction from the prophet samuel so why am i saying all this i'm saying all this to say that the most high he's raising up judges right now who are led of the ruach right and it's in your best interest to hearken when these men and these women who the Most High is raising up as judges in Israel right now, also prophets, it's in your best interest to hear them. And to and if you're not 100% sure, seek Yahuwah before you reject that word, right? Inquire Yahuwah, get in your Torah and confirm if these things be so and if not. The Bible calls that trying the spirit. And if you do that and you have the Ruach, the Ruach will confirm it for you. And if they off, the Ruach will confirm, confirm that for you as well. But you won't know unless you try the spirit and actually hearken to what that man or woman is saying. So just want to give you all a little bit of insight of what the Most High has been showing me in my studies of, of, of judges. <laughs> and we're going to continue. Shalom, family.